Hi, this, hi, I'm Steve Kelly. I'd like to welcome you all to the 16th annual Gene Sullivan Breakfast. And today we're going to be focusing on Democratic candidates running for office in Brockton. You know, this is the 16th year we've come together. And I think it's really important that um, we recognize how, it, how important it is for us to get Democrats elected at all levels. I find it really important that we come together and elect a Democratic mayor, a Democratic city councilors, Democratic school committees. You know, I'd like to, before we start, I'd like to have a uh, moment of silence in memory of uh, Mark Lindsay's dad, David Lindsay. Lindy. Lindy. This is Commander Jim Doherty. Thank you. In salute, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I also like to welcome today, we've got a number of dignitaries here. I've got Greg Hanley. I've got Greg Hanley, who's the Plymouth County Commissioner. I have C.D. Warren, the Mayor of Newton, who's running for Governor. I have Representative Jerry Cassidy. John Buckley, the Register of Deeds. Peggy Curtis, State Committee. Mark Lindy, who's chair of the Southeast Regional School Committee. Tim Sullivan, School Committee Award 7. Archie Gormley, who is the president of the Brockton Firefighters Union. Michelle Dubois, who's a state rep. Alan Pekovich, state committee person. I have Dennis Ignaneri, board three city councilor. I have Kathy Despos. Pasqua Egan, Hanover, Hanson, Democratic Town Committee. I have Joyce Azak, Ward 6 School Committee. Phyllis Ellis, President of the NAACP from Brockton. I have Representative Claire Cronin. Councilors Bob Sullivan, Patrick Quinn, Plymouth County Water Commissioner, and, uh, and is there anybody else that I missed that's a, oh, oh, a Tony Branch? No, with Joan Kennedy. He's, he's a, uh, Tony Southeastern South, Tony Branch, Southeastern Regional Vote. I didn't see your name on the, on the uh, dignitary list. On the okay. Oh, and Ann Beauregard. Ann Beauregard. Ann Beauregard. All right, Ann. Hey! Uh, it's Democratic candidates, is what we're announcing. <laughs> So this is a democratic event, Jack, so if you want to join us, become a Democrat, my friend. Yeah, and I've got Mark doing the candidate announcements. Thank you, Steve. I'm not sure if we missed any elected officials, but uh, 
going from there. Okay, let's see. We on the candidates, it's all in one sheet. So the first candidate who has already come out of the gate, um, Peg Curtis is is going to be running next year as a candidate for state rep for the 10th Plymouth district. Um, candidates got more candidates. Thank you. Um, we already did Tim Sullivan as an elected official. Steve Kelly is running for Ward 3 School Committee in the November election. <laughs> Jimmy Pereira is running for Mayor of Brockton. Jimmy? <laughs> Jerise Smith is a candidate for the Ward 5 City Council seat. Julio Pomar is a candidate for Mayor of Rockton. He's on the review of that. Bishop Tony Branch is a candidate for City Council in Ward 4. Right. Felicia Chalmers is a candidate for Ward 6 School Committee. Yeah. Yeah. Angel Cosma is a candidate for Ward 2 City Council. Gary Keith Sr., candidate for Councilor at Large. <laughs> Councilor Dennis Ianieri, who is a candidate for re-election to the Ward 3 City Council. <laughs> Joyce Asap, who is a candidate for re-election Ward 6 School Committee. <laughs> Tina Cardoso, who is a candidate for Ward 3 City Council. Gene Bradley Duranancourt, candidate for Councilor at Large. Jay Gonzalez, who's a candidate for Governor of Massachusetts, in the back. Ronald Green, who's a candidate for City Council in Ward 3. Susan, Susan McCastro is a candidate for City Council in Ward 4. I'm going to remind everybody that when you do this again next year, that you put, you're going to put your name down so you can be announced. That's the secret of running for office. Did I miss anybody who's a candidate? Uh, Derek Barrows, who's a candidate for City Council in Ward 4. And I'm uh, Ray, oh, he didn't sign in either. Ray Henningsen, who's a candidate for uh, School Committee in Ward 7. today is the people that are speaking that are candidates are candidates this year okay the only exception we made for that is we have two candidates running statewide for governor and they're getting the word out early so we're going to let them talk to so um, I guess we'll get to the speaking program right Steve? I think you're up okay cool thank you sir you're welcome so I have all these can you get me in and sneak me in and move me in on the side but we're going to do that but first of all we have somebody here who is, can't you can't hear me? Really? Well, this thing moves around, so I'm gonna to try to do it. Okay, so we have somebody here who serves our Commonwealth, um, originally hailed from Whitman, Massachusetts, uh, soon to be a resident of Easton, Massachusetts, but she is our great Massachusetts State Auditor, Suzanne Bump, and she's gonna come up here and say a few words for, um, for our Democratic candidates. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I really hope this uh, this kind of uh, temperamental mic uh, works for uh, for this morning. I have a book with me. I don't know if you can see the cover of it. It's a kind of familiar face, I think. It's the face of our recent Democratic governor, Deval Patrick. And Deval gave me this book several years ago. And uh, frankly, I hadn't picked it up in a while. But as Mark mentioned to you, I am moving. I'm moving from my house in the Berkshires and I'm coming back east and I'm going to be living in Easton and I'm really delighted to be back so close to, uh, to all of you. Yeah. But you know, moving, moving 
moving means packing. And after you uh, attain the age of 61 years, you've got a lot of stuff to pack. And I can't take it all with me. And so packing has been a very long, lengthy process because I've done a lot of sorting. And I've done a lot of looking at things. And this is one of the things that I just happened to come across yesterday. This went in the pile of books that I'm keeping as opposed to the part that I'm giving to the Morgan Memorial. And so as I was looking at the book um, in which Duvall recounts his life story and it explains some of his philosophy and his values and how, why it is that he is the person that he is, I found a, a couple of paragraphs that really spoke to me um, and the way I look at government and my mission in government. So let me, I know the Studensky table asked me to keep it short, but I feel compelled to, uh, to, go, to go through here. When the tides of cynicism run so deep, change will come slowly. I understand why so many people in our society, young and old, have lost trust in many of our society's core institutions and in the men and women who lead them. The headlight the headlines are a drumbeat of betrayal, the greed of Wall, Wall Street, the half-truths and outright lies of politicians, the shrill tone of talk radio and cable TV, the tawdry sex scandals too numerous to mention. At some level, we've come to expect disappointment and bad examples from prominent people and public institutions. And this is what really pertains to today. But defeatism, defeatism is precisely the wrong message. We need to remind ourselves that individually and collectively, we can do better. I know that's true because I see that American ideals are more powerful than any one American who might undermine them. If that doesn't speak to the situation in which we find ourselves today that was really prescient of him back in 2011 to foresee the rise of some really ugly politics in philosophies uh, out on the streets and embodied in the person who is currently in the White House. And that is why we are here and that's why we are here all across this country in ever greater numbers in order to take back the dialogue and take back our government from those who would separate us, who would divide us, who would lead us into hate and away from the prosperity that has served us all so well. Duvall's, Duvall's uh, book is entitled A Reason to Believe, and its subtitle is Lessons from an Improbable Life. An Improbable Life. Indeed, Duvall lived an improbable life. He grew up on the south side of Chicago. As you will recall, his father left the family when he was three years old, and he and his mother and sister moved in with their grandparents. And from there, he was able to make it through Milton Academy and Harvard. He held extremely prestigious positions in some of the major companies of our, of our country, and he became, for eight years, our governor. That is indeed an improbable story. And it's an improbable story that really can probably only happen here in America because of the democratic institutions we have and also because of the strength of the Democratic Party that has already always been there for the immigrant and for the underdog. How many people in this room are living improbable lives? How many of you how many of you are, are experiencing the freedoms that you never imagined? Opportunity that your parents never could have foreseen for you. This, in Brockton, a city of immigrants, is where people can live improbable lives. How many of you, and there are a lot of candidates in this room, how many of you have ever had Anybody in your families run for office before? 
only a couple hands went up. And I'm going to, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, but I see a lot of brown and black faces in this room. Did you ever think that you would be able to do this, to participate in a democratic process and represent your people and your values and your stake in this community and be able to espouse a vision for a better world, I bet you never did. And it's a wonderful thing that we're able to do that. You are living, I'm, I'm sure, an improbable life. I'd like to recognize as well another man who lived an improbable life, who passed away and was buried just this past week. My predecessor, State Auditor Joe DiNucci lived an improbable life. Joe, if you recall, was a professional boxer. He never won a title, but he was always a contender. He was always in the ring, fighting on behalf of the underdog. And he was always a champion through the underdog throughout his whole life, not just in, as it pertains to boxing, but he entered public life after that career in boxing, and he was a state representative, and he became the auditor. Who could ever have predicted that that was going to be the case? That a man from a humble Italian family was able to achieve statewide office as the underdog. Joe believed in people. He had the biggest heart that you can ever imagine. He was compassionate and he defied stereotypes. He defied stereotypes in so many ways and one of the most memorable was when he was on the floor of the House of Representatives. This goes way back into the 80s, back when we were still talking in terms of gay rights. And this, as he described himself, flat-nosed Italian, took, the, took to the microphone in the House of Representatives and he spoke up in favor of expanding rights to gays and lesbians. He confounded people. Nobody expected to do that. But he understood what it meant to be stereotyped and undervalued. And he lived an improbable life as an improbable champion for those causes. I feel very honored to be able to, to follow in Joe's footsteps and I read that passage to you because I also feel very privileged to have been able to serve with Duval, who was the embodiment of democratic values, of, uh, of social justice, and of creating our economic opportunity for everyone. And I loved that man. And he gave me this opportunity to serve you in a way that I never would have dreamed of. Believe me, my father never would have dreamed of my doing this. I think that my father spent most of his life scratching his head at where I came from. Because he was a small businessman in Whitman, and I'm sure that he voted Republican more often than he voted Democrat. And he sent me to Catholic school, and in spite of that, I became a lawyer and a politician. I suppose in my own way, I've lived an improbable life. But I have done this because I just felt a calling. When there was an opportunity to run for state representative, I just said, well, if not me, then who? And if not now, then when? And that was the same couple of questions that caused me to run for state auditor. And I'm very proud of the work that I've been able to do on your behalf not only to make sure that government is spending your money well, but to make sure that the programs that we rely on are spending your money well, and that they are serving the people that they are supposed to serve, whether they are children who rely upon the catastrophic illness fund and find their, their families uh, experience months and months of delay to get a check to buy that piece of medical equipment, or fix that handicapped ramp, camped, uh, uh, ramp that gets them in and out of the house, or it's veterans who aren't getting served because the, the state hasn't figured out a way to identify them in order to reach out to them and make sure that they're getting everything that they should be getting from the state. I love the work that I have been entitled to do by virtue of the support that I've received 
for people in this room, and I thank you so much for that opportunity. I look forward to returning as your state auditor next year. I'm going to be needing your help in order to do so. The, the Republicans have said that they're going to be putting candidates up against all of the, uh, uh, the, the Democrats in constitutional office and as many other offices as can be. So I thank you so much. And to those of you who are candidates, I'm delighted to see, I'm so proud to see the way that you answered that question, those questions. If not me, then who? And if not now, then when? Thank you all very much. So, Madam Auditor, I don't know if you recall, uh, we spoke at the um, uh, reception that the BDCC had um, for our late, great uh, Senator Tom Kennedy. Um, and uh, at that time, I think you mentioned um, one of the things you missed about Barack was the Lithuanian rye bread. <laughs> And not being one to renege on a promise, here is your loaf of the oh, wow. Thank you. I can tell it's the real thing because it weighs a ton. <laughs> so I'm going to introduce, we have two candidates for governor here, and we've decided to do alphabetical order just to make it a little easier. So the first candidate is Jay Gonzalez. He's in the room, he's right in the back of the room. candidates for governor, I think I gotta give each of them at least five minutes. I have the bell over here, but I think they can regulate themselves. Here you go, Jim. Thank you very much. Hello, Brockton Democrats. Hello. It's great to be here with all of you today, and my former colleague, Auditor Bump, a great public servant, and definitely someone worthy of the award and celebration. Um, it is great to be here with so many Democrats committed to that core American value that I think defines who we are as Democrats, and that's our commitment to progress. My entire life, I've been surrounded by people who've proven our potential for progress. I worked for John Glenn, an American hero who literally reached for the stars and got there. I got to serve as a cabinet secretary for Governor Deval Patrick, and you just heard his life story from our auditor. It proves the American dream exists, and he never lost sight of all those continuing to reach for it. And there are many others in my life who've proven this point about our potential for progress. People like my wife, who some of you met recently, and my daughters and friends and colleagues, but no one more than my parents. My mom is from Cleveland, Ohio, and during college, she went away on a foreign exchange program to Spain. Nine months later, she came back married to my 19-year-old Spanish father and pregnant with me. And I love telling that story to parents who have kids going on foreign exchange programs. <laughs> really freaks them out. <laughs> so it just says, you're not going anywhere, yeah. I feel the same way about my daughters. Uh, but it, it turns out, well, so they didn't have a lot. My mom had to drop out of college to take care of me. My dad didn't speak English, and he'd never been to college. But with a lot of hard work, he worked his way from laying bricks in a city sewer system to becoming a successful small businessman and a proud American citizen. My mom went back to college when I was in high school and became a public school teacher and a member of the teachers' union. Together, they put all three sons through college, and amazingly, this year, they celebrated their 47th wedding anniversary. Talk about improbable lives. But through that example and the way they parented us, they always encouraged us to set high expectations for ourselves. And they instilled in us a belief that with hard work and a little help, reaching those expectations was actually possible. Now those values aren't unique to me and my family, right? Those are our values. American values, and no one has reached higher, worked harder, and accomplished more together than the incredible people of Massachusetts. Think about it, we started the Revolutionary War. We were the first to establish a public school and a public park. 
the first to recognize one's right to marry whoever you love, the first to make universal health insurance coverage a reality, and the list goes on and on and on. This is who we are. We have always been a leader, but not now. Not under Governor Baker. I've been frustrated by how little our governor's accomplished. But I've been more frustrated, honestly, by how little he has even tried. It's not good enough, not ever, but particularly not now, with a president trying to take us backwards. We need leadership. It is not good enough to simply accept the world the way it exists and try to manage it better. We need a governor who's going to see the way the world should be and take us to that place. Let's aim high. Let's aim high. Let's be us. Let's give working families across this state a better deal, an economy that works for everybody, not just those at the top. How about a living wage, paid family leave, affordable housing and higher education, and child care? How about a transportation system that people can actually depend on to get to work on time? Let's aim high when it comes to our dysfunctional health care system and implement a single payer system that is simpler, cheaper, and does a better job keeping people healthy. Let's aim high when it comes to properly funding our public education system in lower income districts like Brockton. And most important, let's aim high when it comes to how we treat people. We need a governor who sees the value and potential of every single person who doesn't need coaching and pressure and second chances to get it right. So let's aim high. If we do, I know we can build a better future for everybody. That's the lesson my parents taught me. It's the American story. It's what the people of Massachusetts have proven over and over again. And it's what we should expect from our government and from ourselves. And that's why I'm running for governor. I'm not a career politician just trying to get to my next elected office. I'm not going to make whatever political calculation I need to make just to win at whatever cost. That's not why I'm in this. I'm in this because I care about people, and I want to make a difference in people's lives. And if that's the type of candidate you want, if you believe we need to aim high, if you want Massachusetts to be a leader again, then I hope to earn your support, and I hope you will join our grassroots campaign. Thank you very much. reminded me, your parents are 47, my parents would have been 67 on November 11th on Veterans Day, so long time. Um, we also have here, there are three candidates for governor, there are two of them here, Seti Warren, Brockton's a city, Newton's a city, similarities and differences. I, I met Seti when he was originally running for United States Senate back a few years ago, and he always said, he said to me this morning, he always likes coming to Brockton. So Seti Warren. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's great to be with you. It's great to be in Brockton. The first thing I want to do is acknowledge Gene Sullivan and Red. Give them a round of applause, both for Gene's legacy and for Red's leadership here in the Democratic Party in Brockton. I also want to acknowledge the great Alan Pesovich. She right. is awesome, and I am thrilled to have her supporting me in this race for governor. Look. I don't have to tell you, Brockton is one of the great American cities. Innovation, hard work, culture, mixture together. You, this is a city that represents the best of the United States of America, right? Yeah. The issue we have in front of us right now is the defining issue of our time, which is economic inequality. I know, being a mayor, an Iraq war veteran. We have got to deal with this issue. Even with all the greatness of Brockton, we need to make sure we have a health care system that is affordable and accessible. That's why I support single payer health care. Right? We can get this done, right? Oh, yeah. We also know education is the bedrock of opportunity for people. So we have a governor that switched the formula around and caused the city of Brockton to lay teachers off and make draconian cuts. And that 
is wrong. We need to be making investments in education in this city so it can meet its current potential. And that's why I am in this race. But you know something? Here's what I also know. Before the governor's race, it starts with you. It starts at the local level. I knocked on 11,000 doors when I ran for mayor. I won my election by 469 votes. I know you got an election on Tuesday, you got another one in November. We gotta turn people out. This is where it starts. We gotta activate folks, we gotta get them out on the issues that matter. So I know you're focused on this. I support it. We gotta get through this election cycle, and then we're gonna build the biggest, most successful grassroots campaign in Massachusetts history to take back this state house. We did it on question two. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. I, I worked hard against that question, and we can do it again so Massachusetts can have a progressive governor, address economic inequality, and make sure this city actually does live up to its full potential. Thank you so much. Great to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we're stalling a little bit because we want Red to get here, but we, we have a lot of people to hear from. Um, I, I was asked um, to have a couple of people come up here and briefly talk about different things. Ed Miller hosts a television show on one of the local radio stations, the one down in Taunton, and he just wants to come up here real quick and talk about the show. He's brought on all candidates and all sorts of interesting points of view. And uh, Ed, as you know, was one of our vice chairmen of this committee. He was the chair of the Plymouth County Democratic League. And he just wants to come up and say a, a few words. Hey, no, hey, Miller. Hey. Thank you, Mark. I'm only going to take a couple of minutes because you have candidates, great candidates out there who are running an office who wants to do it, make a difference, and they're Democrats. I started this show with my friend. I started the show, I, don't, I think they can hear me anyway because I speak, but I started the show with my friend Chuck Blanchett, we were on WXPR, then moved over, went and closed over, we've been on since June of last year. I started the show because I was getting so tired of hearing what I believe in, income equality, the right for women to make their own decisions, and everything, health care, we're still fighting it, and then I have to listen to people who denigrate that because that's the only thing they hear. We as Democrats have to stand up and get shows on like ours that get, bring the full progressive views that we believe. Because either that or we're on the wrong side and I don't believe that. In Massachusetts, since 1990, we've only been able to elect one governor because they hear that unions are bad and Democrats are bad. We can't even, we, we work hard, and we're still trying to elect a Democratic mayor in Brockton, which is 80% Democrat. Because people hear, they hear the lies, and they hear the lies, and it becomes the truth. So I got angry enough, and as you know, when I get angry, I explode and start the show. So I'm asking you all, please listen. It's 3 to 5 on Saturday, every Saturday. Right now, it's the only progressive, the only Democratic radio show in Massachusetts. Think about that. The most progressive state doesn't even have progressive radio, because we have to fight for it. I'm going to say thank you, and if anybody wants to advertise, it's very uh, inexpensive, and if you're getting your views, so if you're a small business person, please contact us. Again, it's Stand Up Strong with Ed and Chuck, every Saturday, 3 to 5. And maybe you'll hear a different opinion that you hear everywhere else. But we talk about unions, and we do something a little different. We talk about unions, how they help us. We don't hear that much anymore. I want to thank you. I want to thank everybody who is running, because it is difficult, and you're doing the lion's share of the work. I want to thank those people. And Mark, again, thank you for letting me get a couple of minutes. <laughs> really important what it does on a weekly basis to get the word out here. If you listen to uh, the radio waves all across the country, we have a lot of conservative talk radio. <laughs> Don't even want to turn it on. I do tell all my students at Massasoit that you have to listen to both sides so you can sharpen up the side, our side, basically. 
Um, I wanted to remind everybody, uh, John Buckley reminded us that um, Alan Pesovich, who's the state committee woman who everybody knows, has a list of people that are Democrats that are members of the city committee. We are not full up. We do not have 35 people in every single ward that's a member. There's room for more people to join the party, and uh, we always will take anybody that's a member of another party that decided that they would switch, maybe first to unenrolled and then to Democrat. So we'll be glad to take you. We got a big tent in the Democratic Party. Um, just wanted to let you know, so see Alan, because she has that membership list. Um, I also would like to bring up Dan Gilbar from Raise Up Massachusetts, because we have a lot of ballot questions coming up in 2018. He's from the Coalition of Social Justice, which does some great social justice work. And uh, I'll remind everybody, this isn't targeted to Dan. When I start moving towards the podium, that means it's time to say goodbye, so to speak. Um, so Dan, come on up and uh, say a few words. Hi, everybody. Um, so I'm with the Coalition of Social Justice and also the Grays of Massachusetts, which is a coalition of groups, many of which uh, do work in Brockton. And people are joining together in an effort to put three questions on the ballot in 2018. One thing that's already on the ballot is the fair share amendment, taxing people with incomes over a million, using that money for education and transportation. That's already done, but we're collecting signatures on two other ballot questions. One is uh, $15 minimum wage, and the other is paid family medical leave. Uh, we're simultaneously working with the legislature on these issues. We're hoping that the legislature passes either one of those uh, in the next session, but we also want to qualify for the ballot in case we need to do that. I'm hoping that people here will not only sign the petition, but also will talk it up and circulate with their friends and your neighbors and your co-workers. If there are people here with like petitions, I have some that I can give you uh, that you can take with you today. You can also arrange to have speakers come out, if you, any of you, from, for example, from town committees or other organizations. We can have a speaker come out. We have a very good slideshow on these issues and also on, uh, on the signature gathering process. So anybody that's interested in that, please see me after the event or after I finish speaking. And uh, I just want to say we were successful in this coalition two years ago uh, to get paid, excuse me, to get the earned sick time passed on the ballot, also to get a good minimum wage bill passed by the legislature. Thank you, legislators in this room, for passing that. And uh, I think if we join together and put our use power in numbers, we will be able to do it again. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dan, for all the work that you do every day. Um, I know a lot of people in this room have been very involved with the Coalition for Social Justice. I did want to uh, introduce a couple of other people that came in later that are candidates. Um, I'm not sure where he is, but I'll find him. Marlon Green, who's a candidate for Ward 3 City Council. He was in the room. We have uh, Jacob Tagger, who's a candidate for Council Arts. He's right over there. And even though he doesn't have an opponent, Tim Cruz, my Ward 1 City Council, in the back of the room. So now we're at the point where we're going to hear from candidates. Um, I did want to just recognize really briefly the executive board of the Democratic City Committee so you know who we are because we do the work month to month behind the scenes and then we get together the board of the meetings and the events. So our chair is Steve Kelly right over there. Joe Tarr, our first vice chair, was unable to be here, but he's been involved. Uh, John Drzezinskis, who chaired this breakfast, John Drzezinskis is our second vice chair. Susan Castro has two hats. She's the secretary for the city committee and the ward four chair. Deb Mullen, our treasurer, is right over near the door uh, collecting the money. Yours truly is the ward one chair. Bill Hill is the Ward 2 Chair. I know Bill was here. Okay. Steve Thomasy is the Ward 3 Chair. Okay. Uh, I, said, I said Susan, Ward 4. Deb Garland is the Ward 5 Chair. Peggy Curtis is the Ward 6 Chair. And 
last but not least, Joan Madden is the Ward 7 chair. And I also wanted to recognize Jackie Bonarigo, State Committee. So we're going to get to the candidates, and luckily I have a list. It always gets tricky. And again, as Steve Kelly said, we, it is a Democratic City Committee, so we are only letting Democratic candidates speak. And uh, we check the registrations to make sure. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to kind of I'm not putting candidates that are running against each other necessarily next to each other. Okay. So we're going to start with our chairman, who's running for school committee in Ward Three, Steve Kelly. And I'm going to stay near the microphone because we're going to do about three minutes, and then I'm I'll ring the bell if I have to. But I think Steve knows how to talk. Hey everybody! Wow, what a turnout we've got! With all the what a turnout we've got with all the candidates! You know, I'm amazed at how strong this committee has become, and it wouldn't be without all the help of the uh, Rockton Democratic City Committee members. Now, the reason I'm running for school committee is because I've made a commitment. I've made a commitment throughout my life of working to empower people. I started that when I was in college. I worked as a volunteer coordinator with the Saco Valley School for Exceptional Children. These were children that were denied a public school education because they were developmentally disabled. I became a volunteer coordinator. We worked out a school program for them. I went on to become a social worker, worked with the state for 40 years, ending as a program development specialist. Here in Brockton, we have a collaborative group of dedicated people. You know, we had a drop-out prevention coordinating council that had John Buckley as chair. We had Moses Rodriguez. We had Bishop. We had uh, someone from Messiah Baptist Church, the NAACP. We had Mary Baker. That died because of one vote from the school committee. And back then, I wanted to run, but the opportunity hasn't presented itself. So now is the time. And now is the place, and I'm a candidate. So I appreciate your support. Thank you, Steve. Okay, did need to ring the bell for that. Let's go to um, Ward 6 School Committee. And you know what? I think it's going to be easier. I changed my mind. I'm going to put the two people that are running, because that's the way the list works. So we're going to start out with the current School Committee member from Ward 6. And that would be Joyce Asap. Joyce, come on up. Right now, the school committee is I enroll in Republican. So we are hoping to keep some Democrats. Here you go, Joyce. Thank you. Good morning. I wanted to introduce myself. There are a few people that really don't know me and know what I've done as far as our the Ward 6 school committee member. Uh, a little bit about my background. I've worked in the legal field for 20 years uh, as a paralegal with uh, one of the law firms in Brockton. I'm also a realtor in Brockton. So, and I've been serving on your school committee <clears throat> for the past year and a half, finishing up my, my second year. So we've had quite an eventful year uh, since I've been on. We've done so much as far as the Brookfield School, the Ashfield School, so I paid close attention to my two designated schools, but I didn't stop there. I look out for all the schools and all the children in Brockton. Because I'm there to serve the students, I'm not there just to hold a seat and attend meetings. So if we're at the meetings, that's, that's what we need to do, but we, I love attending the fun stuff. I was there the first day of school, like I was last year, greeting my students, and See those smiling faces. When you look at those children after being elected, you look at them differently. So, and it's so hard to explain, but some people understand. Um, I'm responsible for that. Those decisions we make sitting at that table on Tuesday nights, where they're our responsibility. They might not be my blood children, but they're our students for Brockton Public Schools. So I will continue to advocate for them. Um, as far as my constituents in Wood 6, I believe they're happy with me. I've addressed every issue that's ever been brought up to me. And we do have a couple of issues that we're still working on, but 
I haven't, I haven't let those go just yet. So, um, but everything that's been brought to my attention, I've worked on. So, November 7th, I would ask that you vote Joyce Azak and re-elect me as your school committee member <coughs> for Ward 6. Thank you, Joyce. Um, Joyce is being challenged in this election by Felicia Chalmers. I hope I said it right. So, come on up, Felicia. This mic, the volume, that mic for our camera. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? <laughs> so, I am Felicia Chalmers. I am running for Ward 6 in the committee. I decided to run because as a parent of three children with disabilities in the school system and a grandchild, when I heard about the budget cuts, I, I was just very upset. My children are wonderful children and they deserve a good education and so don't yours. I am a, I have been a, four, a foster parent for 14 years for children with disabilities and um, learning and behavior issues. I've done that um, for Again, like I said, 14 years is my passion. I'm also, I've also been a, a store manager for Circuit City, and I don't want to tell my age because we know that we're out of business. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a head teller for Sovereign Bank, so I do have budget experience. I continue to work in the community. I work with BIC, the Brockton Interface, on several things, such as uh, minimum wage, uh, restorative uh, discipline, and also the Family Medical Leave Act. I, I, um, I started a parent advocacy group at Messiah Baptist Church, that is my church. I've been attending there for the last seven years that I've lived in Brockton. And what we do is we reach out to families in need and we direct them toward um, work places that are able to um, serve them. We do Christmas baskets, holiday gift baskets, and everything. One of my goals is to adopt a fiscally sound um, budget and to regularly monitor the funds throughout the year. And that is along with all the other members of the school committee. I would also like to review and approve the school budget through extensive discussion and prioritization uh, of each item with more community input. I feel that as parents, these are our children. We need to know what is going on and we need to get out here, be a part of this community, be a part of that school committee, and give our voice and let our voice be heard. So remember, November 7th, Felicia Chalmers, War 6 School Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Felicia. So I'm going down the list. Usually school committee candidates end up last because I've been a school committee candidate, so that's what's at the top of the, the, the chart. Um, I have, um, uh, we, we, we have a special guest about to enter the room. Right. We have a little, little logistics, okay, and I'm gonna ask you if you could all stand for me. Um, our, our, our good friend, Paul Red Sullivan. talk to each other whenever my father was in there. Red would always eat a good breakfast. My father, not so much, but uh, every time I saw him, and, and he's the guy literally that taught me everything when I was involved with that 1976 campaign. And there was no one who was a nicer, sweeter person than his wonderful wife, who we all dearly miss. And you can see her picture, did I lose it? You can see her picture on the cover of the book. Is it still on the cover of the book? I hope. As I said that, but that just captivated Gene. And um, Red ran so many campaign headquarters, was involved with the state committee, 
he knows presidents, he knows governors, he knows senators, but he is an incredible, incredible man. And let's give him another warm, warm. <laughs> seven school committee race, and that's a November race as well. Um, first, I'm going to bring up current Ward 7 school committee member, Tim Sullivan. Tim? If Tim was driving the bus, Red would have been here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Can you hear, is this working? Yeah. My name is Tim Sullivan, and I am running for re-election to the Ward 7 School Committee in Brockton. This is a position that I've held. This will be my third term. I've done it two terms. I skipped the term, and I came back again, and now I'm re-running for re-election. A little background about myself. I just recently retired from 40 years of driving a bath bus. That public service job. I had to deal with the public every single day, every single minute of the day. It was it was trying at some times. But uh, about myself, I moved to Brockton in 1972. I was married. I've had five children. All five went to Brockton Public Schools and graduated. Now I have nine grandchildren. And they're all in the same boat. And just a little bit about the, everybody knows we've had a bad budget this year. The school committee does not set the budget. The state gives us, the state tells us how much they're going to give us. If we were short $16 million, we had to make it up. I had to work closely with the other six members of the school committee, the mayor of Rockton, Bill Carpenter, and the superintendent of the school, Kathy Smith, and we had to come up with a balanced budget to open the doors on the first day of school, which we did. Unfortunately, we've had 69 teachers laid off. A lot of people are blaming the school committee, which they should have. This, this money comes right from the state and the city. The school committee does not set the budget. They do. We take what they give us. Just a little bit more about myself. I am currently the president of the D.W. Field Park Association. I have been doing that for a year. This is, I'm on my second year right now. And I consider that a public service to people as well. And, as, as Mark has said, there is no primary for myself in the person running against me. We have, there's only the two of us, and our election is until November 7th. I hope to see you all out there. Tell your friends to get out and vote. Thank you. Thank you Next up is someone we worked on for a long time. He was a he, he was a member of the Grand Old Party, and I'll put a word on old, okay? And then is unenrolled, and now he's a Democrat. Ray Henningsen, who held the seat prior to Tim holding the seat, seeking seeking the election. Ray Henningsen. <laughs> Mark. Uh, thank you everybody for having this wonderful event. I want to thank the VFW for holding this event. It's, it's, if you don't know, the VFW has undergone some changes recently. They got new carpet, new flooring, the bathrooms have been renovated, all due to Home Depot and their generous donations. So, um, you know, great, great work for the VFW. Uh, it's a great place. My son goes to scouts here. Um, just a little bit about myself. I won't take too long of your time. There's many other candidates. I'm running for uh, the Ward 7 School Committee seat. I am probably one of the few candidates in this room who actually has a financial background. I come with, well, now I'm a vice president of finance for a multi-million dollar corporation that sells construction materials to masonry uh, retailers. So I carry a wealth of budgetary and 
uh, knowledge in that endeavor. I have two and a half decades of financial experience. This is what I started, this is what my career has become. Um, so I am very adept to dealing with budget, budgetary issues. Um, we need schools that are focused on getting our budget right. You know, my, my, my opponent said it correctly, we get what, we're, what is handed to us from the state. Uh, we're at a crossroads, ladies and gentlemen. We have a governor who's dead set on destroying public education as we know it. We have great candidates like Jay Gonzalez and Seti Warren who are here who want to bring education back to the forefront of this state. We are number one in education in the country. We need to stay number one in education in the country. We can't do that when we have a governor who wants to destroy public education and put charter schools in every block, in every city, in every corner of the, country, of the city and the state. We can't have that anymore. We need good, solid people who are going to be on the school committee, on the city council, on the local levels, on the state levels, on the federal levels. So I'm asking for your vote on November 7th. Um, you know, a little bit more about me. I'm married 26 years now, going on September 7th. Um, I have two kids. One is now a junior, uh, sophomore in uh, UMass Amherst, which she's having a fantastic time. Too good, if you, uh, you ask me, but, you know, especially on my dime. Um, but, and I have a wonderful son who's 11, who goes to the George School local school. I believe in public education. I believe that we need to ensure that public education is a right and guaranteed for all of our children. It shouldn't matter what zip code you belong to, where you're from, every child is deserving of a quality education. They might be 20% of our population, but they're 100% of our future, ladies and gentlemen. So let's make sure that on November 7th, we elect somebody with the financial experience and the knowledge who can bring the school system forward. Thank you very much. I would be neglectful if I did not want everybody to thank the kitchen crew that helped us today. And also, I wanted to let you know that uh, City Councilor Tom Monahan from Ward 2, who works for the Columbia Gas, got called into work, or else there would be nothing that would keep them away from the Democratic breakfast. So I'd just like to let you know that. Okay, so next up, let me look at my list here. Uh, we did Ward 7. And we're going to go for City Council. Now, it all says City Council, so I'm going to sip them out. I'm just going to go down the list. The first one is a candidate for City Council at large, and that would be Gary Keith Sr. Gary, come on over. And just a reminder to everybody, this is the mic you can hear on. And this is the mic that goes to cable, so just keep it close, but not too close. First, let me start this moment by saying thank you for putting on this uh, great event today, to, uh, letting all the candidates uh, be heard this morning. And I want to thank God for giving me the opportunity to be here. My name is Gary Keith Sr., and I'm running for Council at Lodge. From the age of 17, I started serving when I joined the military. And uh, I've been serving ever since for 27 years. I'm a 27-year member of uh, Jubilee Church. I served in my church as an armor bearer to the bishop. I have recently been serving for the last four years on our planning board and our zoning board of appeals, which I believe uh, gives me the experience to actually step into a city council seat since I've been working with them and with the mayor in certain endeavors. My wife couldn't be here this morning, but uh, my wife and I have been married for 31 years. We've been together for 34 years. We've raised seven children in the city of Brockton who have all gone through the Brockton public school system. Our youngest son is in his third year right now at American International College in Springfield, and our youngest is actually in her senior year at Brockton High School. We have four grandchildren right now. We have committed ourselves to serving the city of Brockton, and uh, my kids have now set up their roots here in the city of Brockton by buying uh, their homes and everything else. So we're here for the long run, and we're going to fight all the way through. Like I said, I'm committed to serving the city of Brockton, and uh, that's been instrumental in my helping Lincoln Congregational Church open their doors three years ago. I was instrumental in shutting down Montello Gas 
down by the gas station for selling synthetic marijuana to the citizens here in the city of Brockton. So I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Okay, um, I'm here to actually help push the city uh, forward. The biggest thing though is, some people ask me why am I doing this, it's either I have a passion to do it or I'm very stupid. And uh, I'm far from stupid. I have the passion, the drive, the determination, the will, and I'm going to keep on pushing forward. I have been since I ran two elections ago, so this is my third one. So I'm no stranger to doing this. So on November 7th, I'm hoping that you can consider casting one of your four votes for me, um, for Councilor at Lodge, so I can continue to serve you in that capacity. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you, Gary. So next up, we're sticking with the Councilor at Lodge race. We have uh, Jacob L. Tagger Jr. City Committee for almost going on four or five years now. Been a Democrat since I've been able to vote uh, when I first registered. But I, what I want to say is to all the members who have been here working um, tirelessly with the uh, Brockton Democratic City Committee, you guys should be very, very proud. We should all be proud to see all the new young faces running. I want to make sure no matter who you vote for, I want to give these, you know, these young leaders, you know, credit because I, I mean it's just crazy. I am going to look at certain things, and I, I do want to say this to you guys. This is a great experience. Enjoy it. It's fun. The negative, if they're attacking you, it's because they respect you. Okay? Keep, stay classy. Stay classy. But yeah, I'm very proud. You know, I have friends here that are running this year um, as well. But I just, I'm very enthusiastic about the direction that the city is going. I'm in, and just speaking to myself, I want to make sure I say, I don't know if Councilor Barnes, who's outgoing, is here or you know we're on bca so i just want to um, say thank you to her for her for four years of service um shana and i have not agreed i don't agree with everybody on everything both of you guys will know if you disagree i'll definitely disagree with you um but i want to thank her for her service also want to thank city council president bob sullivan for his work on the council um, it's a weird dynamic for me because i'm not running against anybody i'm running for brockton so I'm just asking for one of four seats, one of four votes. That's all I'm asking for. I will continue to be the person I am, no matter what. So I'll be working no matter, on November 8th. I'm still going to be Jacob L. Taggart Jr. I'm going to stay consistent and work for my community. I am, again, just asking for one of four votes in your consideration. Thank you very much. You guys have a good day. Okay, next, um, I do not believe Council Moses Rodriguez is in the room. No? Okay. Robert Sullivan, City Council President. I don't get that at my house, so thank you. I, yeah, I like that. You know? the three little kids and a wife, nobody really says, hey, Dad, all right. Listen, first of all, um, I want to acknowledge Red Sullivan, and I say this every year. Um, he is Mr. Democrat in the city of Brockton. You can never have too many Sullivans in the room at the same time, so God love you, Red. You know what I also want to do is 12 years ago, I got elected to the city council along with Michelle Dubois, Tim Cruz, Chris McMillan, and there's one gentleman that's outgoing this year, former police chief, a friend of mine, a huge public servant, Paul Stadansky. Let's give a round of applause for Paul. I, uh, I love coming to this event, and when I think about the Democrats, the city of Brockton, I think about the unions and labor, and I want to thank the, the, the labor organizations that are here. I want to thank the, the, the ones that have supported me. Of course, the Brockton Firefighters have endorsed me 144, the Sprinkler Fitters 550, and the, and the Plymouth Personal Center Labor Council have endorsed me on my, uh, my campaign for re-election. And I told this story a few years ago, I'm going to tell it again. When my grandmother, Anna Sullivan, came over, 
to Brockton from Ballyhonest County, Mayo, Ireland. She worked at a factory. She had no formal education. She dropped out of school in fourth grade. She worked at a factory, and it was frankly sporting goods before they moved over to our neighboring community of Stoke. And my Nana tried to organize on a Thursday. She showed up for work on Friday, and she was fired immediately for trying to organize. Democrats and labor and organizations is what it's about. It's about working for the people. I have worked for 12 years, and I hope to continue another two years to be a voice for those that work in the city of Brockton and more importantly, that live in this fine city of champions. So we, the Council of Labs candidates that are here, and those that aren't here, we're not on the ballot Tuesday. You're not going to see our names. But please go Tuesday to the polls. It's extremely important. And then November 7th, Tuesday, November 7th, you will see our names on the ballot. That's the general election. And I'm asking you for one of your four votes. I'm asking to continue what I've been doing to do for, for 12 years, working for you, working with you, being your voice. What you see is what you get. I work hard at all times because I think that's what it means to be a public servant. So I am asking for your vote. I'm asking to continue what I've been doing. It's a proven experience, it's leadership, and it's doing the right thing at all times. So God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next on my list is Jean Bradley Duranacourt. Where's Jean? Thank you. Um, good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning, Jean. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Yeah, I feel good. It's so important to be here. Well, first of all, I would like to thank the Brockton uh, Democratic Committee for putting this together. So they've been doing it for. Uh, I believe 16 years right now. And of course, I would like to thank Jean uh, for all the things that your wives have done and what you've been continuing doing for this city. And of course, I would like to thank each um, and every you know, candidate in this, whether you're running for school committee or whether you're running for mayor, and I think it's important because uh, running for public office can be very tough. As you know, you put your life out there, you put your families, you put your children. So for me personally, I thank you and I hope you know, continue pushing for Brockton and you continue doing this. Here's what I can tell you. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Jim Bradley, the winner court. But in French, we say Jim Bradley, the winner court. I know it sounds like sound Chinese, but that's what it is. Most people know me as Jim. That's what they know. That's what they can pronounce. Or that's what they want to call me. But here's what I can tell you. I was born in Haiti, and I came in this country in 2010 after the earthquake. When I first came here, six years and a half ago, I could not speak a word of English. Fortunately, I was able to win through work in part of library, learn the language, where I'm serving as of right now as one of the trustees of the Chairman Mark Lindy. From there, I went to Master Sweat, graduated with a double major, and then went to Suffolk University, graduated with my bachelor, and I'm approaching my master. Why do I'm saying this? I'm saying this because everybody talks about education. And of course, my wonderful Susan Bond talks about Governor Patrick. I used to work for the former governor. And here's, what, here's one thing he said, hope for the best and work for it. And of course, I used to work for the former mayor of Brockton. And as, as of right now, I work with Senator Brady. So this is what I would like you guys to know about me. I choose to do this because I believe in Brockton. And I choose to do this because Brockton gave me a reason to hope and a reason to believe. About two, about a year ago, I became a US citizen. I choose to be a US citizen because I don't want to just... Thank you. Thank you so much. I choose to be a, I choose to be a US citizen because I don't want to just live in this country. I want to contribute in this country. I could have lived in this country for the rest of my life because I'm legally here. But fortunately, Trump will not be able to send me back to Haiti. But I choose to do this because Brockton has given me so many reasons to believe. You have been giving me so many reasons to believe. And I think it's important for me. So I choose to run for this place because of the education of our children, youth empowerment, mental illness, homelessness, and all of you. And I know that we can do great. When I go outside of this city, people talk pretty negative about Brockton. But one thing I always do, I always say, you know what? I am a Brocktonian. I am the change of anybody or anything that anybody can hope for. We are the city of champions. And if we are the city of champions, that we have to talk about it. So I would ask you to give me one of your four votes on November 7th. It's important. If you forget my name, it will be the longest name on the ballot. So you cannot miss that one. God bless you and God bless you. I love you all. Thank you for that. somebody has to be at another event and um, I'm just trying to be 
cognizant of everybody's schedule. Uh, Jimmy Pereira is a candidate for mayor, and he has to go to church, and it is Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So happy to be here. Thank you, Red, for doing this as well, too. It's an honor to be here. Finally, uh, meet you as well. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank you all for this opportunity. It means a lot for me to be able to run for mayor for this city. This is something that I dreamed of in the year 2009, as soon as I graduated. I put a Facebook post that said, Jimmy Pereira for mayor. And the reason why I, wanted, I said that is because it's about public servitude. I went to school for community uh, geography, regional planning, I minored in ethnic and gender studies. Everything that I did was a decisive move. When I did that, I knew that I wanted to study about both the social structure of our community and the built environment that we lived in. And how do we work together to make those changes? So coming back to Brockton after working for the uh, community, I was a healthy design coordinator in the city of Springfield. I came back and I was set on a mission. I wanted to work for my community. I first went for the uh, junior planning position. I didn't get that position. But being a Brocktonian and being very persistent, I was able to persevere and network and I uh, went in for the, for the job at the Old County Planning Council. I'm at, the, uh, I'm at the Regional Planning Agency. I'm a Community Transportation Planner. Continuing doing that work, I've been able to not just work with the city of Brockton, but for the whole region as well. So from Avon all the way down to Plymouth. And I can tell you, the opportunities that have been going by us, it, it, it's detrimental, it's disappointing. And it, that's what urged me to, to run for mayor, along with the uh, at-risk youth that we have not been engaging. So I'll start off with uh, a little bit of my stories in growing up in the city of Brockton. I was born and raised at Goddard Hospital uh, to a, a single mother household. My mom uh, and dad uh, split up. Uh, he went back to Cape Bird. Uh, so she raised me off on Tremont Street, Newberry Street. If you're familiar with these neighborhoods, you know that these are not uh, easy streets to live on. Uh, but she worked two jobs. She did everything that she can to uh, provide for her children, and I'll project my voice so you can continue to hear me. And mostly what I say comes from the heart anyway, so I want you to really take the time to hear what I have to say. Um, growing up in the city of Brockton was not easy for me, but I persevered. I went to uh, a vocational school in, Sh in Springfield, Massachusetts. I studied uh, sheet metal welding. Uh, following that, I went to Westfield State University, again, where I uh, focused on uh, my uh, two uh, majors and minor. Um, but I was out on a journey. And I continued to look back to the city of Brockton. I'd look in the headlines, and the news that I see wasn't beautiful. So it stayed in my mind that I'm on the course to go back to help my city. So when I finished my job there in Springfield, Massachusetts, I was offered a job, but I was, I was serious about coming back to Brockton. And I transitioned back. I bought a home out on North Warren Avenue. I already had my first daughter, Zola. And uh, my son was on the way, Zelton. And I started thinking about, geez, when I was growing up, it wasn't easy for me. How easy would it be for my children, especially with a $16 million deficit in the public school system? I also thought about the needles that were on the ground. Not long ago, I looked at the, Beaut the Beautify Brockton program, and uh, there were young adults uh, cleaning the side of the street, and they stopped, and they seen a needle, and they had to call DPW to go and get that. I don't want any interactions between our youth and the, the, the negatives of the community. What I want to see is them work along executive administrators, CEOs, learn about the job and be uh, transitioning from school to careers. So on Tuesday 19th, I want you to go out and vote somebody that has heart, that has integrity, that's going to be innovative, that's going to push this city forward. Again, my profession is a community transportation planner. I'm a public servant. And before I go, I want to make sure you all know that tonight we have an event at Morta Basler, uh, 581 Main Street, right next to Dunkin' Donuts, from 6 p.m. on to a night. I hope to see you there, and please remember to vote Tuesday, uh, September 9th, 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So another gentleman that needs to go to church real soon. So I'm going to introduce him as well. Julio Pomar is a candidate for mayor as well. Julio, come on. Please use the mic. They can't hear you if you don't. In the back. I can try to my best. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. My name is Julio Pomar. I came to the United States when I was five years old. I grew up right here in Brockton and graduated in Brockton in 1984. A lot has been said about my public safety experience. Look at those pamphlets I put out. 
That's not all I'm about. In 1982, I was a junior in high school, and there was a big rumor going around how we were going to cut school budget just like it is now. Well, we didn't stand for it as students. We walked out of school. We walked right down Belmont Street. I don't know if any of you people remember that, but it was one of my proudest moments. Because we, as students, we went to City Hall and said, we do not want this. We believed in our education, and we wanted that. We all came back to school the next day, felt great, and we all got five days off because of it. <laughs> the entire entire system, what are you going to say? But we all felt great about it. That happened in 1982. I graduated in 1984. I moved on all my life, became a Navy corpsman, learned how to take care of people. I still do that now. I still work here in the city of Brockton. I don't work for the city, but I work for an ambulance service, and I take care of people every day. Now it's time for me to become more than what I am now. I want to be mayor of this city. Not for my, just for me, but for the children. I have six children. I have four that are mine. I have two stepchildren who only step because they don't, ha they don't have my same name, but I love them just like my own, chi my own kids. I have, four kids that live in, I have three kids that live in Bridgewater with their mother, and I have another son that lives in Bill Ricca, and I see all their school systems. I go to their meetings. I meet their teachers. Bill is a great school system. Bridgewater has a little lacking. Brockton, unfortunately, because of what the state did to us, where it's a struggle for us every day. When I was in high school, I was not a very good student. I was a late bloomer. I waited until I was in my 20s, 30s, and 40s to be a better person than I was in high school. I want to introduce you to somebody who every day is a, is a gift waking up with this little girl. Katie, come up here for a second, please. This is Katie Malloy. She is my stepdaughter only because she does not share my name. Although she tells me at 18 I'm going to get, you know, turns 18 is going to be a different story. Katie's a sophomore in school. She's going to graduate in two years, and this whole world is going to open up to this little girl. This little girl is in the field hockey. She's a star, star student. She speaks Chinese. She reads Chinese, all from the Brockton school system. Wow. She's a graduate of the TAG program. People, people say that parents inspire you. This little girl inspires me to be more than what I am and to stand up for her. And her mother right there, sometimes I think I go around and I'm just her driver because she is the real package. I love my wife, I love my little girl, I want to make sure everybody who has children in the school system of Brockton have the same amount of opportunities that this little girl is going to have. And that's why I'm running for mayor. Please vote for me on the 19th, again vote for me on the 7th if it gets to that point. I want to be there for you and I want to be there for them. Thank you all very much. Before I forget, I just want to let everybody know here that this breakfast takes a lot of work to do every year. I've been involved in different capacities. This year I wasn't able to be as involved. But I just want to thank John Drazinskis, who was running the Ward 6 campaign, but he put this all together with his committee. And, and I don't know where John is. Oh, it's right over here. But John, seriously, he's going to get and Cheryl Lee is over there uh, cleaning everything up. The food was great, the, the setup was great, and there are folks on the committee as well, and I don't want to get myself into trouble. But John, you know, when, when, I, when I ran, <laughs> campaigning is a full-time job. Involved in the activities is a full-time job, and if you have a job, you know, your job was to do this, so I know we all appreciate it. I love doing it. So next up, let me see who we have. I'm going to make sure I stay on the list. Okay, we're going to go over to the... Uh, Ward 2 City Council race. And like I said, Tom Monaghan got called to work, but we have Angel Cosman in the room, and we're going to bring Angel up to say a few words. Yeah. 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 Morning, everybody. Morning. Morning. So, first, let me uh, thank the BDCC for hosting this breakfast and memorial to Gene Sullivan and, and Red was in the building, as well as John for putting all of this together. This is my fourth time uh, coming to this breakfast and my first as a candidate for public office, so uh, very happy to, to, to be here this morning. So uh, last night I went to the NAACP candidate forum and, and saw many of you there, and I don't want the Academy Awards thing to happen to me again, so I'm going to keep my, my comments a little bit briefer than I was yesterday. Um, <laughs> So my name is Angel Cosme, I'm running for Brockton Ward 2 City Councilor. 
I have a master's degree in education and a bachelor's degree in psychology, and I'm currently working as an educator, uh, possessing teaching licenses and moderate disability. What's up with this mic? That's not good. Yeah. All right. I do need it, right? So I possess teaching licenses and, and moderate disabilities, um, as well as secondary history. Uh, I've worked as a clinician, as well as a community organizer. So I've been mobilizing around issues for years in this great city in various uh, volunteer and professional capacities, such as helping to organize a delegation that resulted in the, in the uh, Brockton getting a drug court. Very proud of that. Uh, I also opposed the casino, despite how some of you in the room may, may feel. I didn't think it was appropriate for Brockton to have a casino. Uh, advocating for immigration, criminal justice reform, education, equity, economic dignity, youth empowerment, and police and community relations. These are some of the things that I've worked on over the years in addition to uh, my teaching. So I have a proven track record of advocacy and organizing around these issues pertaining to social justice, especially for the marginalized segments of our society, out of a simple yet profound love for humanity. As corny as that sounds, that's why I do what I do. As Ward 2 City Councilor, I would advocate for fair access to resources, good jobs, housing, opportunities for entrepreneurship, and I will promote public safety. I will invite the public and my constituents and business owners in the decision-making process whenever possible in order to create transparency and to promote accountability. I will diligently research the issues presented before the council, and I will be a counselor who makes decisions based on inclusion of all that encompass Ward 2, one of the most diverse wards in Brockton, I may add. Brockton's demographics are changing, and thankfully to our democratic process, we have an election cycle that encourages candidates to run for office. I am proud of the fact that about 40% of the candidates running locally are people of color because it is reflective of and thus representative of the populace. Frankly speaking, some oppose such change as if they are entitled to retain power and control, but we live in a democracy that is governed by the people. So this election cycle, you can accept the status quo, but you can ask yourself, how have you benefited from their leadership currently? As Ward 2 City Councilor, I would be the voice on the council that would base decisions based on morality, equality, and equal ac access for all, not just a selected race, a selected age, or economic class. I have the ability to effectively communicate with an array of people, and despite our political differences, I aim to find common ground that allows us to move forward in a unified manner to prosper our city and its inhabitants. During the last four years, the Ward 2 City Council position was unopposed, this year I am the contender competing for my opportunity to help propel Brockton forward. I have a wealth of experience in organizing, educating, volunteering, and advocating for a better Brockton. And many of you can attest to this because I've worked alongside of you in many of those endeavors. So again, my name is Angel Manuel Cosme Jr. I'm honored to have your consideration for Ward 2 City Councilor on November 7th. Thank you and God bless you. I'm going to switch. Oops. I'm going to use the mic. I'm going to switch to the Ward Four City Council race because we almost lost someone who was staying here diligently, patiently. And I'm going to start with Derek Barrows. There are three candidates. I'm going to go all three in a row. So Derek, come on up here and uh, give you the three minute cue. Thank you, everyone. Um, my voice gets a little bit raspy. I had a football game yesterday. Went down to the wire. Um, and my throat's a little scratched. Uh, thank you, John Zinskis, for inviting me to this. It's my first year here. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a 24-year-old college grad. I'm a lifelong Brockton resident. I'm um, from the Davis School. So I did not graduate from Brockton High. I'm a Spelman grad, along with Jack Lally, back in school together. Um, I'm a homeowner. I just graduated from Plymouth State University in 2016. Uh, 2016 from Plymouth State. As a, I graduated with a major, two majors, political science and criminal justice. Uh, I took a job in finance and quickly learned in Boston, a really big firm uh, called McAdam. Chasing money, college grads, student loans are expensive. Uh, and learned that that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to work with kids. Um, so I took the summer off, came back, and got a job at Brock I'm an MTA. Um, I also went back to school in January at Cambridge College, 
uh, where I have my master's in mental health and school adjustment, so to, with a focus in gang violence. Um, because I was one of those people that grew up, uh, like Jimmy, with two of my immigrant parents, and not the best neighborhood, not the best uh, circumstances. So with that, I'm actually transferring schools. I'm moving to the Goddard School as a behavior interventionalist to work with extremely impaired students. Um, students that are, suffer from depression, manic disorder, all the way to schizophrenia. Um, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm a committed Brock, Brocktonian. Uh, I've been here for 24 years. I'm going to keep it short because I've got to get to a new, another event. Um, our key campaign pieces have been community, education, entrepreneurship. Um, and with this campaign, a lot of people like Jacob, uh, Gary, told me, hey man, politics is a, is a tough game. I've probably learned more in the past 90 days than I have, you know, four years in college. Uh, <laughs> um, I faced a lot of adversity. A lot of people, you know, he's 24 years old. What does he got to bring? Uh, we learned from Jack Valley that age doesn't matter. So with, so with that, on September 19th, Tuesday, please cast your vote for War Force City Councilor Derek Browns, and let's make Brock and Barrett together. Thank you. Next up, Susan DeCastro, candidate for Ward for City and I'm a candidate for Ward 4 City Council. And at this, time, thank you. at this time, I'd like to thank the Brockton Democratic City Committee, the Sullivan family, the Studinsky family, and I was, the, I was the chairman of this Sullivan Breakfast last year. And so I want to say kudos to John Drusinskis and Shirley Hopgood. They've done a great job. I know how hard this is. Well, I believe that experience, integrity, and character are at the heart of my campaign for Ward 4 City Councilor. And I've been a resident of Ward 4 for the last 27 years. And I've spent five years on the Brockton Planning Board and two years on the Brockton Zoning Board of Appeals. I volunteered for nearly 20 years as an officer and as a board member of the Charity Guild in Brockton. We feed people in, at a food pantry and we run a thrift store. Um, I've been an attorney for 30 years. My practice is primarily in real estate and business. And many of you probably know that while I was on the planning board, I was very critical of a power plant that was proposed to be built in Ward 4. And, and for my efforts, and I was sued along with other public officials for more than $60 million by the developers of that power plant. And it's a funny thing. They thought their civil rights were being violated by the critical scrutiny that people were giving them in the city of Brockton. I thought our rights were being violated, go figure. And you know, at that time, many people were saying that this power plant was a done deal, that it was gonna happen, give up, Susan. And I've gotta tell you, because of the efforts of many, after 10 years, we got no power plant in Ward 4. Yeah, yeah. We have remarkable families and beautiful neighborhoods in Ward 4. And I want a Ward 4 in the city of Brockton that our children, including my two young adult sons, will eventually return to, to be homeowners and not anytime soon, but parents. <laughs> And you know, on a very personal note, the strongest person that I've ever known was my mother, Jean Igo Nicastro. And she made me who I am today, someone who put herself through college and law school. And her parents immigrated from County Mayo in Ireland at the turn of the 20th century for a better life in America. And, and I know a lot about the efforts and I admire immigrants because of Winnie and Tony Igo, my grandparents. And my mother used to say that she and I are Mayo girls. We're Mayo girls. We embody what my grandparents were. And 
I know everybody's in a rush to get out of here because the Pats are playing the Saints at 1 o'clock today. But did you know that right now, starting at 10.30 our time, the all-Irish football final is taking place and Dublin is playing Mayo. That's right, and Dublin has won two times the last two years and they think they're going to be the champions this year and they're absolutely a machine. But Mayo's team is really good. They're scrappy. They stumble, but they keep at it and they work really hard. And, and they have a never say die attitude. That's the Mayo team. I'm a Mayo girl. I don't have a machine behind me. I'm the underdog in this race, but I won't give up on Ward 4 or the city of Brockton. It's supposed to rain on, on Tuesday, and I'm a wreck that it will keep my voters in. Ward 4 voters, call me if you need a ride. Be tough, get an umbrella, and please vote on Tuesday for Susan DeCastro, Ward 4 City Council. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susan. Last but not least in Ward 4, my colleague who's on the Southeastern Regional School Committee, Bishop Tony Branch. If you really are a Democrat, clap your hands. You know what, I, I'm not hearing you. If you really are a Democrat, clap your hands. All right, let me do this again. If you're proud of what Red Sullivan and his wife has done with this organization, clap your hands. Now, I know some claim that they had to go to church, but they didn't realize that there was a bishop in the house. We could have church right now. As a matter of fact, I was supposed to speak in Boston. Thank you, I was supposed to speak uh, in Boston this morning. As many of you know, I've retired from pastoring after 30 years. Uh, so, but I need to explain to you that in my culture, the culture of the spiritual Africans and those that were part of the slavery of this country, we speak in terms of the church. So I have to come up in here with a scripture. Is that all right? Amen. Now, if you haven't gone to a black church, you need to say amen. amen. Oh, y'all not talking back to me. Say amen. amen. All right. Uh, so, what the scripture tells me in Mark 3.25, and if a house be divided against itself, it cannot stand. Are you hearing me? Yeah. As Democrats, we cannot be divided moving forward in the city of Rockford. So this has nothing to do with the word for race, because I hear people come up here and they talk about they have opponents. Derek is not my opponent, nor is Susan. And I've said this before, my opponent, opponent is a lack of affordable housing. That should be your opponent as well. You're not a Democrat if you're not fighting for affordable housing. I need you to say that I'm going to fight for affordable housing. You're not a Democrat if you're not fighting for criminal justice reform. I need you to say that I'm a Democrat fighting for criminal justice reform. You're not a Democrat in the city of Brockton if you're not fighting for homelessness. So if you're a Democrat fighting for homelessness, say I'm a fighter for homelessness. You're not a Democrat if you're not fighting for, uh, if you're not fighting for equality because there's a lot of inequality. If you are a real Democrat, say that I'm fighting for equality. So this race is not about, it's not about uh, uh, anything that what I call foolishness. It's not about my opponents. It's really about what is the best experience required in order to make change in Ward 4. That's what this is about. The people asked me to run for this particular seat. And we bless the Zdzinski family uh, for their 2005 election until now. We bless them for that, for their leadership. But the reality of it is, is that the community is my church, and I'm with them. And I'm telling you that they're not happy. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Y'all yeah. are talking back to me. They're not happy. So my point to you is this. This race is about, on Tuesday, it really is about change. It's about change, people. We have changed. The, demogra the demographics of this city has changed. We need to own up to that and to realize that it's not change that's in the air. It's changes that is a reality. A house divided cannot stand. We have to be united. We have to be united. 
or you will not be able to say moving forward that you're a Democrat. May the church say amen. amen. Thank you. Okay, so let me take a look at this list again because I went all over the place. Um, okay, let's go over to Ward 3. I have two candidates that are running in Ward 3. The three candidates that are running, sorry. So I'll go in the order of the list. Uh, first up would be Tina Cardoso. Is Tina in the room? There she is, all the way in the back of the room. Okay. Here we go. Tina. Hello, friends. Can you guys hear me? It's so nice to be here. Thank you so much to Rotten Dems and to VFW for the invite to speak. This is exciting. I haven't done this before. I am a nurse by trade nearly 20 years in the business of caring for and about people, and that's what I do. And that's why I'm running right off the top, because I care about the residents here in Brockton. I am a lover of all people, black, white, brown, you are. I get along with everyone. I started an organization called Criados Unidas about a year ago, trying to unite people, okay? That's what I do, I'm a uniter of people. And piggybacking on what Tony Branch says, we are divided right now. And knocking on doors, I see that every day how divided we are in the city. And we need to cut it out. We need to come together. It's time for change, it's time for unity, it's time to get things done. And that's why I'm running. I want to thank Joyce for the notebook because I got some paper. Thank you, Joyce. And then um, I'm going to also um, piggyback a little bit on what Suzanne Bump says because people out there are saying uh, that I was pushed to run. I was asked to run, but I wasn't pushed to run. I am running because I want to run. I am my own person. I have my own mind. I can make my own decisions. I'm not a politician, but I went to UMass Boston and I got a nursing degree there with two kids, okay? So I, I'm pretty smart. I think I can get in there and make my own decisions. I want to clarify that. And I'm running because, again, what Suzanne Bump says, if not me, then who? We have to motivate people in our community to run. This is an exciting time. We have so many minorities running, and they're running because they're passionate, because they care, because they want change, they want to be involved. We're always saying that minorities don't get involved. Well, now we're getting involved, and everybody's asking, why are we involved? <laughs> you can't win. You can't win. But we will win. We will win. So, and, and if not now, then when? When are we supposed to do it? When, when everything falls apart? When our city falls apart? No, now is the time for people to get involved if you can. You don't have to be a politician. I am a nurse. I graduated three kids from Brockton High. I have a daughter who's getting a PhD right now in psychology. I have a daughter who has a master's in education in Boston. My second one's at UMass Amherst. I love Brockton. I love what Brockton High afforded me. I want to give back, and now is the time. Thank you very much. Next on my list is Reverend Marlon Green. It was Reverend Green. Right over there. Give him a warm welcome. Thank, thank you, Mark, and thank you to the uh, Brockton Democratic Committee, and thank you to the other Sullivan family for their service. I do acknowledge and appreciate all the elected officials here from the uh, state and the county and the uh, city level as well. Uh, my name is Marlon Green, and I'm running for City Council to represent Ward 3. I do want to thank the Lord for my wonderful, awesome, and supportive wife, Winnie Green, who is with me today. Would you stand up? Uh, this is my wife of almost 13 years, and thank you for your uh, support. I'll share my story with you. I'm Jamaican, and in the early 90s, my father made a decision to relocate uh, his family, uh, five children, and uh, his wife, my mom, to the United States. We came to Boston, Massachusetts, and then some years uh, later, we made the decision to relocate to Brockton, Massachusetts. And I've been in Boston for, 
I've been in Brockton for the past 15 years. I'm a minister, and I've been an ordained minister in my church denomination, Church of God, for the past 15 years as well. And I've served in many communities throughout New England, bringing people together at a table for a common cause to empower and to enrich the lives of our young people. I've worked with families from different backgrounds. I've worked with churches and organizations from different backgrounds. And I've rallied them together for a common good. I've worked in the healthcare industry as a research project manager for the past 15 years, managing complex trials in cancer and diabetes and different disease indication, and managing multi-million dollar budget, both in the academic realm and also in industry as well. And my hope is to bring these experiences and skill sets into city government and to better serve our community, our constituency, our students, our sons, and our <coughs> daughters. In the words of my great parents, who, who are still alive, and I'm extremely proud of them, they would say to me continually, Marlon, nothing try, nothing done. And I want to say to you as Democrats, number one, there we have more in common and more unites us together in this room and on the streets of Brockton than the things that uh, divides us. I know this is a competitive race, but there is more that unites all of us in this room than things that divides us. Nothing try, nothing done. I will try and I will try and I will try until something is done for the betterment of our city and for the betterment of our young people and for the betterment of the immigrants that we have in this wonderful and in this great city. On September 19th, we have a choice to make. On September 19th, we have an opportunity to try and for something to be done. Consider Marla Green. I'm number one on the ballot. Please make me number one, and let's go Green. Thank you again. Thank you, everybody. And last but certainly not least in Ward 3, we have City Councilor Dennis Neary, who's all the way in the back there doing something. Thank you. Good morning. It's a great privilege to, to be here, and it's a great privilege to see my good friend uh, Paul Sullivan. He and I at one time were uh, opponents, believe it or not, some years back. And, uh, and I'll tell you one thing with the, the race that we had so many years ago, Paul taught me one good thing, never take anything for granted. And it's what I'm doing as running for re-election for the Watt 3 City Council race, never take anything for granted. Because there's a certain group out there that wants to see me gone, putting somebody else in place. I do say it's tremendous to see this group here this morning. I think we, over the past 10 years, have waited for this big day to have everybody come together as a group, as Democrats. It's multicultural. That's what the city is. It's an urban city. Work with it, not against it. And tell the guy in the corner office to start to come together and work together as one and not just with inserted groups. Don't, don't. Uh, oh, I've been calling them structures by that person. And I don't like that. And I don't like that at all. So I know that the people of War 3 know just what I've been doing for the last 14 years. And I'm sure they're going to be right up there on Tuesday to renominate me and take me to the election in November. And, and I know there's still work left to be done in one three. We have streets that need to be done. I also have a project on West Chester Street where some people are trying to put in homes into West Bridgewater and access road through West Chestnut Street. The people in that area do not want that. That's a project that we're going to keep fighting. I'm going to fight it right to the very bitter end. But I'm also going to keep my, up my fight for the people who bought three. That's my job. That's what I've done for the last 14 years. And I'm very proud of that. Proud of my record to, to say that I've done a lot of things within the war. You know, uh, the late Mayor Paul Stadinsky always used to say, 
the best thing you can always stand up and say after years of service is, my record speaks for itself. And it does. And it does. And, and I go back as a, a long-term member of the Democratic Committee, and it was I, and, and even then, Mayor Studinsky, and, and, and Alan Pesovich, and a few others that created the Studinsky Scholarship, and then once the mayor passed, it was named in memory of, of, of the both of them, the Studinsky family. So, a great honor, um, a great honor to them as well. And I also know this breakfast is a great honor to a talented woman that knew politics in the city of Brockton, and that was Jean Sullivan. She was right there, and she kept on the line every step of the way. Great woman, great woman. But so that being said, I know there's other people that, that are here to speak, so I just want to end by saying that hopefully my, my people will be out on September the 19th, which is this Tuesday. Polls open at 7, they close at 8 p.m., and I know that I'll be renominated, and I'll make it to the November election, and I know that I will succeed from that point as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, let me try to keep up with this list, a little bit of paperwork here. Um, so we are next up, we did four, uh, nope, we're gonna go to five. So we have um, incumbent counselor, Ann Beauregard. Come on up, Ann, you're right behind my camera. Oh, the hat, go ahead, go ahead. Hello, I'm Ann Beauregard, the Ward uh, 5 city councilor. I am running for re-election. And don't vote for me if you don't want safe streets, because I'm on the traffic commission, and let me tell you, I'm working with my colleagues to change that and to see that we have safe streets, stop signs, signals that we need. If you don't want transparency, then don't vote for me because I'm on the accounts committee. And let me tell you, that is one super busy committee. We have a serious amount of homework that we review to see where your hard-earned money is spent. If you don't want the best school system in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, then don't vote for me because I work with the superintendent and the teachers and the volunteers and the staff and the parents to get the best things we can for our students, our parents, and our community. If you want to have more empty storefronts and less economic development, then don't vote for me. Because I work closely with small businesses to work and bring them downtown. I actually have a magic academy downtown. Unfortunately, they haven't done enough magic yet <laughs> to bring us more financing in our community. But that hasn't stopped us. They're asking me to move away from the microphone that's happened to me before. <laughs> so we can see you. Yes. Well, they don't need to see me. They just need to hear me. I am the shortest member of city council, but probably the toughest. <laughs> okay. Don't vote for me if you don't want to work collaboratively with the remarkable institutions of higher learning in and around the city of Brockton. Don't vote for me if you don't want a positive future for the city of Broughton, for our seniors, and an expanded and large council on aging. And most of all, don't vote for me if you don't want to see more homeowners living safely, nice neighborhoods, clean streets, because I worked closely with the Registrar of Deeds recently and the head of the Broughton Redevelopment Authority to see to it that we keep a gentleman that works behind the scenes many hours to see to it that we address the abandoned and distressed property in our community. And most of all, don't vote for me if you don't want an empowered community because I'm a strong proponent of transparency. I educate. I empower, I work closely with the media to inform individuals of what's going on in their city, the one that they pay taxes in, the one that they want to live safely in, the one that they want to raise their families in, and the one they want to retire in. Vote on November 7th, and please consider voting for me. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, next up in Ward 5, we have Doris Smith, who's going to have a job. and I'm running for Ward 5 City Council. So um, I want to say for the last two years, I have worked with Democrats and Unionists. I am the Affirmative Action Outreach Officer for the Brockton Democratic City Committee. I have worked closely with unions to, and to the membership committee to increase the minority membership within this organization. I want to say, with the committee members, with the chairpersons, and the membership, you can see in this room that we have done some work. And everybody who is in here who has either commented on the fact that there is increased minority population or participation in this organization speaks to that work. Thank you. And also, I am vice chairperson of my union, uh, Correspondence Cope Committee. So I want to say that we have bought a table here and it's filled with activists and community members and progressive people who want to see Brockton move forward. And what is a safe street? Through our union, SE 509 and the other SE unions, we have sat down with immigrants in this city who don't feel safe on their streets because they needed to be informed of their rights. So we provided the immigrants' rights training. We brought in lawyers for them to speak to because they don't feel safe on these streets. So we educated them. So if they get picked up or challenged or in some other part of the country in the, in the same afternoon, they know what their rights are. And we did this a couple of months ago at the Brockton Public Library. So let me tell you, Brockton has changed. And we have met and faced the challenges. Thank you to the Democrats in the room who work with me, the unionists who work with me, to keep Brockton moving forward so we can hold our head up and we can carry on in 2017. Thank you. Yeah, I'm making sure my list is um, checking it twice, so to speak. Uh, let's see. What races do we have left? Who Six. have we heard from? Six. Okay. Six and seven. Seven is unopposed. Of the city council. So we're going to do six, and um, John is here. Joanne is not here, and unfortunately, our, do, our rules do prohibit anybody who's not a Democrat from speaking. So apologies to Council Valley, but. For Democratic City Committee. So I'm going to bring John up here uh, to, to speak, and again, just to give him a round of applause as well for doing this. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to my hood, Ward 6. Yes, this is the VFW Club, and it is in Ward 6. Uh, my name is John Brzezinskis. I did run in 2015. I lost by a small margin at that time in the preliminary election. And at that time, I, uh, while I was congratulating the victor, our, our current ward counselor, I told him I'd be watching. Uh, he had two years to accomplish something. And I did watch it in those two years, and I'm not satisfied with what I'm seeing and what I saw. So therefore, I'm running again because I love Brockton and I love my neighborhood. So a little bit about myself, I am a retired retail store manager. I've dealt with things like uh, budgets and the human resources part of that, of that business. Uh, dealt with a lot of different types of personalities, which you certainly have to on any level of politics, especially local. I have, um, being retired, I have uh, time to put into this job. My two opponents for the two other people that are running, one is a full-time college student, the other is a uh, full-time employee and she's running her own business also. So I have time to put into it. And also, um, I've often told people that um, even though being a ward counselor or a counselor at large does not require 
any type of uh, job requirements, I think you need two things to be an effective board counselor. The first thing is probably more important than, than the second. The first thing is life experience. You have to have the experience in life, okay? If you're talking, if you're discussing things like a $400 million budget for the city of Brockton, and make no mistake about it, the city of Brockton is a business, and it has to be run like a business, then uh, you, need to be, you need to be a homeowner, you need to be pay property taxes, you need to pay water bills, you need uh, to experience that entire package. I'm, I will be an independent voice on the city council. I will not nod my, uh, uh, not, not my head to everything the mayor wants or the majority of the city council wants. I will be independent. I will ask the tough questions. Do the, sorry, do the research that needs to be done. And if the decision is unpopular, uh, as long as it's for the people, that's the important thing. So. The other, the other thing is life, uh, besides life experience, is involvement in the community. I'm not going to reiterate what's on my palm card, okay, that's only a partial list of, of what I'm involved in. Uh, I actually, when I lost in 2015, I got more involved, I didn't go high. Okay, I got more involved in the community and um, you know, whatever the, whatever the result of the election is going to be this year, I plan on staying involved and getting more involved because I love my city, I love Brockton, I love Ward 6. So I'll finish by just saying the turnout for Brockton's primary and preliminary elections have been abysmal at, 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 at the best. So I, uh, you know, I'm running a very tough preliminary race. I'm asking everyone um, to come out and vote on se Tuesday, September 19th. Uh, the, the weather, uh, I understand, is not going to be that great, but you know, pray, pray for good weather so we get a good turnout. I'm running against a, a fellow Democrat who's not here today. I don't know why she's not. Okay. And I hope to depend on every Democrat in the room that lives in Ward 6 for your vote because I am running against a unenrolled incumbent. So um, with that, I, I thank you for coming to the breakfast. Uh, God bless Ward 6, God bless the Democratic Party, and God bless America. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank my uh, family, my brother Douglas, my sister Therese, and Representative Kennedy, 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 uh, Cassidy. Oh, I keep thinking of his boss. <laughs> I'm sorry. And uh, I did that on purpose. Yeah, right <laughs> and uh, he's, uh, he's an old friend, not in age, but Jerry's come a long way from being a, a racquetball pro to a city councilor to a state representative. And I've asked him to present the, uh, the award to the winner. Thank you. Chicky and I go way back, and uh, even uh, his father, uh, Paul, when I served on the city council, told me a story that my grandfather, when he was on the uh, police force, uh, would give him rides from, uh, you know, uh, from his neighborhood to uh, city council meetings. And uh, it was, it's just amazing that, you know, Paul, Paul was one of the, the, the best guys I've ever known, and uh, I just want to, you know, say Paul Jr., um, you know, he and I used to play racquetball for, uh, a few years ago, and I was a little skinnier. But uh, I just want to present this award to the, uh, the uh, recipient. The um, we the original plan was to present two scholarships, okay? And um, because of uh, the lack of applications, uh, we uh, we were going to present one. Uh, the winner was not able to be here today. Uh, there was a communication breakdown. Uh, but anyways, I'd like to announce the winner as. Uh, uh, former um, Ward Six School Committee uh, uh, School Committee person Michael Healy's daughter Alana Healy. So that's the award. And, uh, I'm pleased to say we have one so far, and we will be awarding the second scholarship later on this year. Um, I do want to remind everybody what some of the different candidates have said. 
that the biggest, most important thing is on Tuesday to get out and vote. People think preliminary elections aren't important and that the presidential election is more important than the local elections. We've had abysmal, like John said, turnouts in the past. 4%, I remember, one year. Pathetic. We've got to do Brock and Proud and go out and vote. I think everyone in this room knows it, but tell your fellow friends and neighbors to go out and vote. And lastly, if you want to sign up to be a member of the city committee, uh, Alan is going around with a sign-up sheet. So thank you all very much for being here, and uh, go Brockton.